to it. Yeah. Holy shit bags. <laughs> <laughs> that many, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> this is going to be kind of a non-traditional presentation. Uh, you know, actually I had this really great like 300 pages of data collected from stuff I'd done against NFR and Black Ice and a few other IDSs. And <clears throat> then I got to talking to <clears throat> Chris and Robert and all the people who run those companies. <laughs> and I thought, you know, well, why be such a jerk about it? And then, and then also, I was going to do a bunch of Tachik and Newsham stuff, and then I saw Robert's presentation and everyone else's, and I thought, well, this has been done already. I mean, do you, really, do you guys really want me to rehash all the Tachik and Newsham stuff? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's, uh... <laughs> okay, well, the guy who wrote Snort, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> So I really, you know, so I really didn't want to rehash all the Tachik and Newsham stuff. So I like literally, seriously, woke up this morning, not too very long ago, and <laughs> and sat down and had a conversation with a few people, and uh, I put these slides together in like about 25 minutes. So I hope you like them. <laughs> and if you don't, I'm sorry about that. Although I do have, actually, I have a lot of cool stories, but I'm going to tell the first one. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so we went to uh, we went to Sands Network Security a while back, and we were in a twenty by twenty booth across from Network Associates. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they had this really big ass sign that said, "Who's watching your network?" <laughs> and I thought. You guys are pretty stupid. <laughs> so we had about a thousand shirts printed that said... <laughs> <laughs> so much to their dismay, for about the next uh, two days, about 500 people were walking around in shirts that said, we're watching your network. <laughs> And I think they were across, you know, from us just going, you suck. <laughs> so to take it one step further, hopefully I won't get sued again. <laughs> Their attorney sent us a letter and told us that we had been violating something uh, to do with their slogan or what have you. And our attorney sent back a letter and said, basically, fuck you, get a little more creative. <laughs> So, we're watching your network. So, if anyone, this is a really interactive session, as you can probably tell. Shit, I may not even talk about technology. <laughs> if, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. And if anybody asks a good question, I've got about 15 shirts I'm going to throw out. So, except for the guy who wrote Snort. <laughs> what do you guys do with Snort? <laughs> That's a good question. I'll get to that. So also I have these uh, little, have you seen these little pins? I have these little pins that say, fuck me, I'm leet. <laughs> so, although... <laughs> so I don't have many of those, but I, I don't have any monkey stickers either, so you guys will just have to deal with the one on stage. <laughs> yeah, I told you it'd be fun. So, and you know, you guys thought you might want to go see Simple Nomad. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I swear I may not even talk about any of this. So I've been thinking a lot, and I think everyone else at, at our company has. Also, I'm not going to try and pamper our technology a whole lot, too. So, Although, I do have some slides <clears throat> that were created by our graphic artists, so you're going to see it, a lot of, like, Hiver World logos and stuff couldn't be helped. I like barely know how to run PowerPoint, so some marketing gimp. What's that? Oh yeah, there you go. Good good call. Who has time to do that though? Oh yeah, that's probably true. Next time I'll use Magic Point or you know, if they ever port uh, if they ever get around to getting Star Office or something working on uh, OpenBSD or if it, if anyone could ever make it work, send me an email. So anyway back to the slides. Um, so Feynman, who I think everyone probably knows who that is, Richard Feynman, fantastic physicist, really great, great work, work that was totally accessible to everyone. <clears throat> he said something that I think totally sums up how I feel about network security. 
and how I feel about the stuff we're doing and how I feel about everything everyone else should be doing. <coughs> Which is basically... <laughs> Man, I'm going to bag on NFR. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Which is basically to, uh, you know, to imagine and, and, and think about things which are there, not to imagine or think about things which are not there. So that's sort of, I think this, I think this quote sort of summarizes about the next, I don't know, there are probably four slides. <laughs> So I'm going to talk a little bit about domain specificity, which is the idea of understanding what it's like on a specific network in your network infrastructure. I'm going to talk about false positives and uh, how a lot of IDS technologies are basically generating an incredible amount of false positives right now, in my opinion. I'm going to talk about hybrid IDS. I'm going to talk about high-speed network monitoring. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about active packet scrubbing. And if Tachik's in the crowd, he's going to scream and yell and throw stuff at me. So let's hope he went home already. Okay. Obligatory bullshit marketing slide. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so a typical network infrastructure. <clears throat> you know, you have multiple network segments. You have numerous critical servers. You have uh, firewall VPN and other protective technology. You have multiple locations. You have functional groups, right? So it looks... Very simply, I told you they were graphics from our, you know, graphic artists. So here, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I figure it pretty much sums up most of the firewalls on the market, anyway. So. <laughs> Holy shit! It's burning. Don't worry. That's natural. <laughs> Yeah, holy shit, it lost state. Don't worry, that's natural. <laughs> holy shit, it doesn't reassemble fragments properly. Don't worry, that's natural. <laughs> so. so, anyway, your network. See, I told you there's going to be hyperworld world stuff everywhere. <clears throat> so basically, uh, you know, in your network environment, this is a really simple diagram, but you have hopefully a co-location facility somewhere, maybe it's Hiverworld, world, maybe it's someone else. <clears throat> You have, what was that? Snort. No, it's interactive. <laughs> you, you can say snort. I guess it's snort. <laughs> I'm like, hey, yeah, really. Like, hey, dumbass, does that mean anything to anyone but you? <laughs> snort, snort. Anyway. <laughs> like, what, what is, Marty, what is that disease where you just call shit out randomly for no reason? Tourette's? All right, somebody escort the guy with Tourette's out of here. He keeps saying snort. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, it's the guy from Genocide 2600. Oh, well. <laughs> <All right. laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> so, no, I swear I'm going to get through these. So, anyway, you have, uh, you know, a scanner, possibly. In our case, our scanner is called Swarm, so, of course, I have the Swarm logo up here. And you have a management console. And theoretically, you're not using some crappy product where multiple scanners or multiple IDSs can't report back to the same management console. Or are you? Anyone? No? OK. So what do I mean when I say domain specificity? Well, I mean that networks are constantly changing, probably. Right? It's always something. Someone plugs something in, something changes, you know, that sort of thing. <clears throat> I mean that the environment, if you're more than a few class C's, what do you so someone want to answer, how many, how many class C's do you think one administrator can, can actually manage and keep track of? <laughs> Zero. Is that what someone said back there? That was funny. Four. Four? Yeah, not many, right? Just a couple? Yeah? Okay. So... I say that the environment must be understood through automation, not people handing information around, right? I think you have to have some sort of automated tool constantly monitoring your network. Currently, you know, currently it's interesting because there aren't really any scanners that do that, right? Most scanners, not to name names. <laughs> Most scanners, you know, you just put on a laptop, you deploy them, you fire them off, scan the network, and then, you know, you walk away with obsolete results a few minutes later. So I have this idea of you have, to con you have to automate the process of understanding your network with technology, not with people. Okay, moving on. 
and then and of course track each change on the network. Now it's going to get more fun. <clears throat> so then I thought I'd quote Raynham, um, <laughs> and, and not just by saying script kitties suck. <laughs> did did anyone see that talk at Black Hat? No. Holy shit, bags. <laughs> Open source is bad, script kiddies suck, don't release anything, you're all going to hell. I basically, <laughs> basically I just summed up like about an hour of his meandering. Holy shit. Don't forget our lawyers are bigger than your lawyers. Yeah. And, and our lawyers are bigger than your lawyers. So, uh, you know, there you go. <laughs> so, but I'm going to quote him anyway, but not, not in that respect. And I'm going to get sued by like every fucking company out there if I keep this up. <laughs> <laughs> but I, hey, I figured stuff down. What the hell, right? I, I figure most of the suits will not even come to this, right? Free advertising. <laughs> Free advertising. There you go. So, yeah, for Raynum too. Look, I'm actually quoting him. So, the ultimate IDS would not only identify an attack; it would assess the target's vulnerability, the target's vulnerable, notify the administrator if the vulnerability has known fix. It would include, excuse me, directions for applying the fix. Is this my beer? <laughs> Sorry. Can you, can you guys tell I have like ADD big time? <laughs> I'm sorry, who were you? What am I doing? <laughs> right. so, does, thank you. Someone in the audience? Check it out. <laughs> and he's... <laughs> yeah. He's on my team, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Actually, there's free beer over here, right? Oh. All right, goons, we have a real problem. There's not enough beer here. Someone bring more beer. Okay. So. See, now you get to go home and go, you know, the founder and chief scientist for Everworld? I saw that dude drinking on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone's like, dude, I want your job. I just get the fuck around and people like come and see me. <laughs> okay, so what do I consider false positives when it comes to IDS technology? Oh, by the way, someone keeping track of time? You? Good. You give me like a five minute warning. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay, so what do I consider false positive when it comes to IDS technology? Well, it occurs to me that the word intrusion detection actually means to detect intrusion. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> Not that I'm crazy, but that it means to detect intrusion. <laughs> and so then it further occurs to me that if you're going to uh, actually do that, like detect intrusion or detect an attack, that I would consider false positive any time you detect an attack that's destined for a host that doesn't exist. Right? So, like if someone <clears throat> like RFP runs Whisker against my network. Did, did he announce Whisker? Did anyone know? Yeah? Whisker 1 4? Yeah, good. <clears throat> if he runs Whisker against my class B and my class B is only 5% populated, then why am I trying to detect attacks on 95% of that network? I mean, unless I'm running like a, a flight recorder or, you know, I'm trying to keep track of every single thing that happens on my network, why am I recording attacks? to hosts that don't even exist on my network. So I call that a false positive. If you alert and wake me up at 3 in the morning, my pager going off because you say that there's an attack, you know, because it's some high profile attack. You say that there's an attack to a host on the network that doesn't exist. That gets old really fast. <laughs> so of course the natural extension of that is ports that aren't open. Right? How can I have an attack destined for a port that's not open? I mean, this all ties back with like understanding your network, right? So, how, how many of you actually deployed an IDS? Yeah, about half. Good. So, <clears throat> how many of you remember putting that IDS in place and then spending about half a million dollars worth of man hours tweaking it so that it wouldn't generate false positives every thirty fucking seconds on your network? <laughs> I have I have a client. I swear to God, they installed a. a Leading commercial IDS. <laughs> a, a leading, not the leading. Now, if, if it were the leading, I'd just say real secure. 
<laughs> so anyway, they installed a leading IDS, and that and 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 they put it in their network, and they put it on their backbone, and they have a lot of traffic. And so the first thing they noticed, of course, was that you know because they have about 70, 80 megabits sustained on the network, they had to put in about 10 sensors, right, with a load balancer. Okay. The second thing they noticed is that they had to put those sensors on like E450s with half a gig of RAM each. <laughs> the third, you know, third thing they noticed, mom, third thing, yeah, third thing they noticed is that they could do aggregate across 10 sensors about 70 to 75 megabit per second before the sensors started falling apart across 10 sensors on E450s. You probably know who it is by now, right? <laughs> like everyone. So <laughs> the other thing they noticed is, and this is just, God, this is classic. <laughs> the other thing they noticed is about two days after they put these in, they had them sending pages to their pagers. And uh, the <laughs> their pager company called them and said, you know, I, I think 3,000 pages per minute is a little excessive. <laughs> <laughs> and so after, after about you know, 48, 72 hours of this, they finally shut it down, but they had so much mail queued up that when they finally got their pager bill, one guy's pager bill for three days, anyone want to guess? $16,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, righteous. <laughs> Where can I get one of those? <laughs> I didn't realize that they, they made systems that tested the pager infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so where was I even? Services that aren't running, right? I don't, want to, I don't want to know about attacks that are destined towards services that aren't running. Let me give you an example. Despite what Nmap says, just because I have port 80 running does not mean I am running a web server on it. Agreed? Yes. Good, good. Despite what Nmap says. <laughs> so that brings us into invalid services. Similar kind of thing, right? And... <clears throat> And then I'm going to take this like a step further. See, I like to say I was going to talk about Tejik Nisham stuff, but now I'm just rambling. I was going to talk, uh, um, so improperly ordered, fr uh, fragmented, constructed packets between the NIDs and the target. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> who's read Tejik and Nisham's paper, Insertion Evasion to Mile Service? Okay, the Hiver World guys have. Anyone else? Stellarchek. Okay, yeah, you don't count. Anyone else? <laughs> yeah, a few people. So, hang on. So how fucking elite is this? This is my copy, and <laughs> it's got my notes in it. So I've like underlined some stuff that I think is relevant. Wow, well, here's a uh, Network Associates white paper on high-speed IDS. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> so <laughs> I just. I hope there are no attorneys in the crowd. Those guys are like... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking AI. All right, keep going. <laughs> All right, so Tejik uh, and Newsham's Insertion of Agent Denial Service, autographed by me, and uh, with notes. Anyone want it? Anyone who hasn't read it? All right. Yeah! <laughs> you want to toss it out, Brandon? I'll give you a beer for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Is it a, is it an import? No. Nah, then fuck that. Anyone else have an import? <laughs> Microsoft action figure. You have a Microsoft action figure? Oh my god. <laughs> this just keeps getting better. Oh, totally sold. Fuck <laughs> your name, man. <laughs> Dude, this is elite. <laughs> so, one more, fuck me, I'm late. Anyone want it? Bounce right off the ceiling. Good. <laughs> you guys are like, maybe I have to talk about technology, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Which one is this? Is this, uh, 
I think this is stupid looking guy. <laughs> or at least he's in the stupid looking guy action figure set. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's in his, What is the. <laughs> yeah, it does say MCP on his little backpack. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, really. That's true. That's true. Yeah. What was it? What was it he said? He, uh, what was it that uh, Petrelli said? He said, I'm not saying that Bill Gates is the devil. I'm just saying if the, the, he and the devil met, they wouldn't need an interpreter. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so here's the concept. I may actually get this out. So the concept is <clears throat> that if you have a scanner on your network, and it doesn't have to be the Hipper World scanner, <clears throat> and <clears throat> you have a management console and you have an intrusion detection system, how are you going to mitigate this, right? How are you going to mitigate the idea of not having open ports, not having open services, of <clears throat> not getting alerts when packets are destined toward machines that don't exist on the network? And so cleverly, I have constructed real-time communication between the IDS and the scanner. No? I know it's groundbreaking. <clears throat> the idea, right, is that the scan... <laughs> All right, <laughs> kind of back with a lighter. Woo! <laughs> Dude, Pink Floyd's over there. <laughs> so the idea, right, pretty simple, pretty hard to do. The idea is the scanner would grab information about the domain, therefore creating domain specificity, Therefore, the IDS would have an a priori knowledge of the network, and when something happened, an attack came in, because you know which hosts are alive, what operating systems they're running, which services are running, which vulnerability exists, you don't get inundated with false positives. Pretty cool, huh? Moving on. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I'm gonna, there's this guy on my development team who is like, about an order of magnitude better programmer than anyone I've ever met in my entire life. He's a certified badass. And, <laughs> and in fact, there's a sticker on my laptop that says badass. I don't know if you saw it. Okay, badass. And I got one for him, too. Yeah, ooh, badass sticker. So, <laughs> so, <clears throat> so here's the idea. Um, <clears throat> I swear I was going to talk about high-speed nodes, right? Somewhere. Did anyone actually read the abstract for this talk? Let's see, and what the hell are you doing? <laughs> so the idea for high-speed NIDs is that you have something. See, Steve's freaking out. Oh my God! <laughs> so you have something that does. That you get as close as you can to the kernel when you're listening to packets. See, I'm just going off now. And you expose information to user land better, like with LiPe, similar to what LiPe kept does. Copy as few packets as possible and you have a large <coughs> shared buffer space with information, uh, state information, right? So, can you tell that this is one of the original slides and all the other ones are just shit I made up? Yeah? Good. <laughs> so, <coughs> the point of this slide, though, if there is one, is that <coughs> at some point here between now and OpenBSD 2.8, um, if, if we get around to it, Right, um, Ludwig, myself, and Solarcheck are trying are going to try and commit uh, kernel patches to OpenBSD that allows you to do about 300 percent faster packet capturing on the OpenBSD system. So, and Theo said that if we don't do it, he will, and then we won't get credit. <laughs> so I think I might do it. Oh, yeah, well-designed hardware. <laughs> totally forgot to put that in there. Okay. Um, did anyone... Does anyone know what active, pack, uh, active packet scrubbing is? Yes, maybe. Uh, okay, aside from you. you. See, you keep raising your hand. <laughs> yeah. Okay, another fuck me, I'm leap. There you go. Okay, so <clears throat> there's another concept... Originally, see, originally this started out as Tejik and Newsham, and now it's just like, whatever John's going to rant about now. 
Active packet scrubbing is a way of synthesizing information onto the network so that you guarantee that as packets come into the network, they go through a gateway, and that that gateway scrubs the packets so that you prevent things like Tejik and Nisham style attacks. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> let's say, for example, that you have a buffer overflow or, uh, well, let's start with buffer overflow. Let's say you have a buffer overflow and you can trick the IDS by inserting like a no-op into the buffer overflow. Okay, right, simple. Well, active packet scrubbing is a way of synthesizing all that information so that those no-ops get pulled out and so that everything that goes into the target network or everything that goes out of the target network looks exactly the same, right? So the idea is because this is just an opinion I'm about to state, like everything else hasn't been. Um, the idea is that because intrusion detection systems are fundamentally flawed, that in order for you to have an intrusion detection system on the network that will try and keep up with all of the information that actually gets blasted into that network, you're going to have to do something kind of interesting, something like a router or a gateway that does packet scrubbing, that sanitizes packets, so that <clears throat> if Rainforest Puppy comes out with a version of Whisker that puts a bunch of slashes and all kinds of crap into a URL, this active packet scrubber cleans that up so that the target information on the, ho on the target network always looks the same, right? Follow me so far? Good. <coughs> so you can also do some cool things like maintain heuristics to prevent odd packets from being on the network, right? If you, if you monitor network traffic over a month and then you see some packet that you've never seen before that has no possible destination, you can eliminate that packet. Shunt it, log it, move on, right? <coughs> and then it prevents unus unusual or abnormal information from passing in or in throughout the network, as I said. Okay, we have a question. Is it firewall? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I thought I could go back to the slide with the firewall if you need a refresher. <laughs> now, this is that's an interesting question. Um, no, the question was, is this a firewall? And um, I should have, is that a good question? Should I give him a shirt? Yeah? <laughs> give it to someone else, okay. <clears throat> the, here's the idea. Um, there have been a lot of, there have been a lot of papers written about this concept of uh, distributed firewalls. I think even Cheswick and uh, Belvin put together something that said distributed firewalls. Uh, here's the idea. Originally we had routers, okay, and gateways, things like that. Then we moved toward firewalls. What is a firewall? Nothing more than a really smart router, right? It's a router with more advanced access, access control lists, things like that. So I think Cheswick or Bell Belvin, I can't remember who, probably Cheswick, uh, postulated several years ago that there was this concept of uh, what he called a distributed firewall. The distributed firewall would be a system that would sit on the outside of your network, act as kind of a gateway firewall or a gateway IDS, would communicate with the other firewalls in real time and you know sort of maintain sanity on the network. And <coughs> That notion was further emphasized by Tatrick and has been has been talked a lot about uh, well not a lot but has been talked about somewhat with uh, like the pack of all concepts from Honeyman and the things Doug Song has been talking about and as well Vern Paxson uh, has written a paper about this notion of scrubbing packets as they come into the network. So <clears throat> the, the idea here is that it's not a firewall, it's like the next step, right? You have a firewall and then you go forward and you have something that does like reactive access lists, right? Does reactive access control. So is it a firewall? Uh, from one perspective it is because it does routing and it passes traffic through. From another perspective it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot more evolved as a mechanism for preventing crazy traffic on the network. Um, I believe that the technology today has not uh, exists, but only in limited areas. The, que what, the question of bandwidth is a good one. How much bandwidth are you asking about? Like OC3 or T3 or just r rational bandwidth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is rational bandwidth? Um, the technology exists in two forms. Um, in one form, I have about 2,100 lines of code that I am debating whether or not I should check into the OpenBSD source tree to do this very thing. And then the selfish person in me is saying, well, or should I 
release that as a product and keep the doors open. So, <laughs> I don't know. The technology uh, exists somewhat. It exists, <clears throat> certainly I know that, I know that uh, Vern Paxson has worked on some of it. Um, I, you know, I spent about three hours talking to Doug. I know he's working on some things like this. But like I say, I have about 2,100 lines of code that actually, for the most part, does this, that I may check into the OpenBSD sources. So, quite, quite good question, though. Question. Want to share? Go ahead. Good question. The question was, how do you suggest uh, that we regulate which is what, what packets are considered odd and which packets are considered normal? And in my opinion, the only real way to do that is to, is to maintain some sort of heuristic information about how the network is structured. How are you going to do that? Well, you're going to have to do that by maintaining uh, something like a continuous scanner that keeps track of what the network looks like so that you at least have some knowledge of the network. And then with uh, IDSs or with systems that have been deployed for some period of time so that you can maintain this heuristic model. It's, see, here's the thing, okay? You know, I talked earlier, I mentioned automating with technology or automating with people. So no matter what you do, this is opinion, again, caveat big time, opinion. Um, <clears throat> no matter what you do, okay, you're going to end up spending about four to six weeks tweaking a system for your environment, period. Get, get ready for it. You know, deal with it. There's nothing between you and it working other than a little hard work. I mean, it, <laughs> that's the way it is. So the question is, are you going to automate that with a bunch of people running around as experts doing it, or are you going to automate that with, you know, some sort of system that will keep track of your network for you, maintain heuristic information about the network, and then know what something odd looks like? Because unfortunately, and I love this company, but unfortunately not all of us can afford to create another counterpane where we have a bunch of people monitoring traffic all the time. So, no, I like counterpane. They're great people. You have a question? Me? Uh, got me um, two, two parts for this. Okay. Uh, as long as the first part isn't bullshit. No. <laughs> oh. Are the scrubbed packets for just the IDS or for the whole network? Yeah, good, good question. And, yeah. the second, and the second part is if they're for the whole network, how do you make sure that the scrubbing doesn't break something? Good question. I didn't say this is going to be easy. So um, it's destined for the whole network. The idea is to maintain a network that, that keeps these synthesized, sanitized packets within it, right? That's the first part. So it is for the whole network. And the idea of how do you maintain uh, some idea of what real traffic looks like? Well, <clears throat> once again, it has to deal with uh, having some understanding of the network by way of tools that give you this a priori knowledge about how the network looks, how it acts, what operating systems are on it, what applications are on it, things like that. So, so, so there is a potential for breaking legitimate protocols by scrubbing that? <clears throat> uh, absolutely. Just as there's a potential for killing someone if you have a gun and don't know how to use it. I mean, all technology, whether good, you know, how, how, however it looks or however it feels, is can be good or bad depending on how it's used. The idea here is that, as I said before, it, I'm not saying this is easy, but I am saying that this is how I think we should move forward. So let me see if one, one quick. Okay. Wow, I'm at the question section already. <laughs> You're like, what the hell did you even talk about? Good question. See how many shirts I have left. Let's see a few questions. And you want to hand out shirts? No? <laughs> Here comes Anne, the uh, token Hiverworld chick. <laughs> Dude, she's totally elite, though. Like, she can reassemble out of order fragmented packets with overlaps in her head. <laughs> <laughs> So should we let her decide who asks interesting questions and who doesn't, or should we let me decide? What do you think? Okay. So uh, you, <laughs> the Fed guy. <laughs> Are you or ha or? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no. Two parts. You just look like a Fed. <laughs> I'm sorry. You had a question. <laughs> Doesn't that limit your visibility to uh, the attack where I'm doing my recon work so I can start 
mm -hmm. watching this and then identify them as a, a potential uh, conflict later on. And then the second one is the, uh, the packet screen. <coughs> Doesn't that open your system admin up to uh, a denial of service as well as a student user going to packet scrubbing on why their DM application doesn't work? Um, so, maybe. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. So, the question was so fucking long, I don't even remember what it was. Uh, <laughs> No, the, so I think the question was, um, what was the first part? <laughs> aren't you putting blinders on by ignoring the Right. So the question was, aren't, aren't you putting blinders on? See, I'm rephrasing it exactly so that I'm not hiding from it, um, like other vendors. <laughs> Put a mic in front of me, see what happens. <clears throat> um, the, the question is, aren't you putting blinders on by ignoring you know, what might be legitimate recon work on your network? by having something that only identifies active attacks in progress. And what I have to say to that is, yes. And you know what? I'm doing it on purpose. I think there are general purpose tools like Network Flight Recorder, TCP Dump, Snoop. I think there are general purpose tools that absolutely that is their job in life. Maybe Snort. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that's their job in life, right? To catch everything or in some cases to catch everything until you hit 20 megabit and then drop everything. But <laughs> Okay, in all cases. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm ac absolutely ignoring the things that I don't care about. Um, Marty coined a term that I think is very cool, and it's called target-based IDS. And the idea is that you only care about maintaining intrusion detection for a network picture for which you understand the targets on that network. And I think that's obviously the natural evolution of this. Good question. Uh, the guy in the hemp B shirt thing, what is that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, you, uh, does. <laughs> That's an excellent question. The question is, how do you deal with fragmented packets across uh, <coughs> across this packet scrubbing uh, environment when you have sort of no no real idea of what kind of path the packets are going to take? And <coughs> the answer to that question is, <coughs> the only way you're going to do this and do this right is if you have a system set up where the system communicates in real time. Like, say, Cheswick mentioned this notion of a distributed firewall, and what I have to say is that this system will not work if you just put a bunch of islands on the net, right? Not to uh, quote Bruce Sterling, who, never mind. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so the idea is that these systems have to communicate in real time. They have to communicate with an upstream management console. They have to communicate with the scanner. They have to communicate with the IDS. The idea here is that the IDS, the firewall, the packet scrubber, these sort of things have to be a part of the network infrastructure, right? They can't just be some random ass thing that you bought from some vendor that doesn't tie in with other vendors. There has to be a, an open way of communicating between these devices. And you know what? I'll even plug us just for a second here. We absolutely plan to release our rules language as open source as well so that other vendors can adopt this real-time communication. So. Uh, was that a good question? You gave me a shirt, right? Is this okay. like the Foundstone action figures? Yeah, that's, yeah, the Foundstone action figures. <laughs> that's funny. Hi, I'm Joel Scambray. <laughs> she just asked if it was the Foundstone action figure. Good God. Uh, Camera. Don't throw stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, <clears throat> so, Correct me if I didn't understand the question, okay. Um, the question, I believe, was if you use OpenDS, OpenBSD's bridging and you use, what was the other portion of that to communicate? Oh, the OpenBSD bridging as you're scrubbing. 
Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, using OpenBSD's bridging as scrubbing is a really, 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 really good first step. Unfortunately, things like Whisker, things like adding, you know, uh, a backspace in a in a Telnet stream for stream reassembly, as you saw maybe from Graham's talk, um, it's not going to solve problems like that. So you actually do have to have one more level of granularity where you're doing active scrubbing on not just the packets themselves, but on the content payload. So, but that's an excellent first step. Did you give him a shirt? That's good. That was a good question. <clears throat> um, okay, the guy in the like green thing that exploded. Is <laughs> from Well, which one? Uh, oh, cool. Orbitals. <laughs> but I didn't go to the concert because I like don't get any sun. So. <laughs> there we go. Uh, my question is related to network ideas for monitoring. As opposed to much the perimeter, mm -hmm. it seems to me that the large focus um, with most IDS systems is on exploits. And uh, I agree. I, I actually went to your site and read some of the, <coughs> the white papers that are out there, and it talks about the exploit database that you maintain. However, when you're looking at internal uh, intrusion detection, I mean, the, the stuff I care more about is an administrator all of a sudden telling to the server that they've never. To before. Right. And policy management issues like somebody's using SMP from a machine that shouldn't be doing it. Right. Okay. And the other problem is related to. Do you want a mic if you're going to keep talking? The other issue is with a switch network, and uh, with switches, it's becoming increasingly difficult to monitor all the traffic that goes across a single switch. It's impossible for us right now. Okay. Um, there's a switch on the bottom. It's not too complicated. Good. Um, okay. Yeah, so the question was, uh, I, and I believe I'm interpreting this correctly, but it is my universe where I'm at center, so I'm going to say what I want. <laughs> um, the question was, Uh, people are spending a lot, possibly too much time just looking for exploits and not enough time looking for what would be traditionally considered uh, anomalous behavior, you know, when someone's doing something from a system inside that they shouldn't be doing it from. And uh, I believe you feel that uh, this anomalous behavior should be taken into consideration a lot more. And not only that, but even if it is, con if it is taken into consideration, how in the hell are you going to manage it because of switched environments and the complexity of that? And that's, those are all good questions. Um, <clears throat> or comments, I think. Yeah, I do think people are spending an awful lot of time playing the counting game, counting how many exploits they each have. Oh, look, I've got 300 exploits that I check for. You know, never mind the fact that 175 of those are freaking username password guesses. You know, sorry. Um, <clears throat> sorry for those vendors that are cringing because I just called bullshit on them. But <laughs> so offensive. <laughs> Actually, so this, this brings me to one quick little tirade I'm going to make here, which is, um, do you guys have any idea what it's like trying to be a vendor in this space? Right? I mean, everyone is so freaking jaded. Right? They've been lied to by vendors. They've had vendors tell them what is just complete bullshit. And so when you come in, of course, you're like, hey, how's it going? You know, we have this thing. It does some stuff, and it's pretty cool. And they're like, yeah, right, prove it. <laughs> and you're like, no, look, I have this model of, you know, cool predicate calculus based out. Yeah, whatever, prove it. <laughs> and and so, you know, so so then you have you have a situation where like at some point it's okay for a vendor to stand on stage and say that their, you know, forty six laptop does hundred and forty eight thousand packets a second. <laughs> And you're like, what, is that the fucking magic laptop you have there, Chief? <laughs> I'm, did I? I'm sorry. Is there an E10,000 under the under the stage? <laughs> the hell are you talking about? 148,000, <laughs> dude. Your 46 can't even move a pointer through memory across 148,000 structures in a second. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I even answer the question? Okay, so, <laughs> so I think, I, yeah. Well, thank God we have a good attorney, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So I totally agree. You know, even though I get up here and I joke and I have a lot of fun, it is DEF CON, so deal with it. 
But I totally agree. I think people spend an, I th I think spend a, uh, people spend an awful lot of time thinking about exploits, and they should be really thinking about their network. And this concept that I threw up of domain specificity, it's the idea that you need to know your network before you know how to protect it, right? How can you protect your network if you don't even know what's on it? I mean, the idea of coming in with an IDS when you don't understand your network and just turning it on and saying, well, you know, it's not really doing what I want is ridiculous, right? I mean, the concept here is you need visibility on your network before you can, before you can even add an IDS. So once you do add an IDS, or once you do add this packet scrubber, or once you do add some sort of reactive system, then you have a great ability, right? You can start grabbing information and maintaining some sort of map of everything that's happened. And so you know, exactly as you said, you know if some crazy person in marketing who's never run SNMP before is suddenly firing up the latest, like, ADM scanner that does SNMP, you know, grinding across public and private, you know, uh, it, it, you know if they're doing that, right? Because you have some understanding of what's going on in your network. So I totally agree. People spend way too much time thinking about exploits, and not nearly enough time thinking about how can I get an understanding of my network that makes sense. <clears throat> how many shirts do we have left? How much time do I have? Okay, cool. I got plenty of time to rant. <laughs> oh, hang on. I, I don't know if I don't know if you get to answer a question. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, so just for those of you who don't know, this is the guy that I just call bullshit on. <laughs> oh, P2400? Single processor? Okay, so you're not like forcing processor affinity or anything crazy like that. <laughs> Okay, it's got a 32-bit onboard NIC. Do you want a mic? <laughs> so this is the fun stuff where like the, the, the vendors actually come up and start like, you know, duking it out. <laughs> so for those of you in the audience, take a picture now. It'll never happen again. <laughs> The next time, one of us will be dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, it'll be next tomorrow morning at dawn. <laughs> so anyway, uh, one of the latest developments we've done with our IDS is create a, a custom hardware driver. This uh, notebook happens to have the one card that we support, which is a 3C905C from 3Com. Um, so it's basically what he said earlier. Hang on, hang on. Uh, the hardware guy. What was that? Uh, yeah. It's 3C905C. I'm sorry. Okay. And what was your driver for that? Okay, uh, the issue with this card is that we wrote our custom driver. Just like you guys are doing your kernel mods, we wrote a custom hardware driver. We bypassed the operating system completely. <laughs> so anyway, you know, this is all like theory. Like, you know, this is like crap, right? So what I'd like to do is to ship you guys this notebook and have you run the tests that you want to run, whatever you want to run. Absolutely. And then publish the results. I'd love to do that. <laughs> And luckily we're in the Bay Area, so I can like just send it across the Bay and send you guys the notebook. If, so I just, I just want you guys to know, I mean, I do, I, obviously I have some respect for Network Eye, so I wouldn't be blowing them so much crap, right? <laughs> if, if I didn't like them, I'd just ignore them. <laughs> and also, I mean, we're a fair company. I mean, I haven't come up here and said anything totally crazy. I totally would be willing to take you up on that. That's awesome. And I'm big enough that if I publish the res if I find out that the results are true and that and that Robert's right, I'll put them on our front fucking page. No, just well, just post them a security focus or something like that. Yeah, good call. So, and and we'll maybe even get security focus to link right. to it or something. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Thanks, man. I can give it to you now. It's got perfect information on it. No problem. No problem. I think that... Absolutely. Absolutely.
one more thing on this t-shirt is uh, I came from Network Associates. Actually, I came from Network General, which started the original CyberCop Monitor project. And uh, they what got a little... SNI? No, actually, CyberCop Monitor 1.0 was actually licensed from Wheel Group. Okay, so then Wheel Bill Larson, uh, CEO of Network Associates, bought out Network General, and then, got, and then Cisco bought out Wheel Group. And those two, John Chambers and uh, Bill Larson, got into like a little tiff, and they basically had to pull the CyberCop Monitor 1.0 product off the market. This was after their We're Watching Your Network or Who's Watching Your Network campaign came out. So kind of screwed, it meant that they weren't watching your network. <laughs> So then, like, the SNI folks got together some Haystack people with the sniffer drivers. They sort of clued together CyberCop Monitor 2.0, which uh, I've never seen in real life anywhere. I don't know if it really exists. <laughs> <laughs> so, being the founder of Network Ice, do you want to fuck me? I'm lead stick. <laughs> <laughs> What a great sport. <laughs> you guys should just give him money because he's such a good sport about it. I love that. Um, <laughs> how many shirts do we have left? Okay, we have three, two, three. We have two shirts left. Two more questions. Uh, okay, that guy looks like he's going to ask something hard. Uh, do you think that uh, IBS technology belongs on a standalone box or is it something that should be integrated into uh, other passengers? Um, yeah, that's a really that's a really good question. I personally believe that today, right now, that the IDS technology needs its own box. I think that there are too many demands on wh uh, what has to happen when a packet goes from the kernel to the decode to the fragmentation reassembly to the detection engine for it not to be on its own box. Now, I don't think that that's going to be true in the future. Excuse me, too much beer. I think that in the future, uh, the, yeah, like I said, I got like two hours of sleep last night. <laughs> Look at the monkey. Um, <laughs> monkey. Um, yeah, I do think in the future you'll be able to do something cool, like put a daughter card on maybe uh, you know a Cisco, or you'll be able to put some sort of blade uh, inside of some sort of chassis and do it all in the blade when things move toward ASIC and things like that. But right now, man, we are so in our infancy. I mean, we have people claiming all kinds of things, uh, and I've never in real life seen an IDS with all the rules loaded perform at above, no matter what the hardware is, perform at above like 20 megabit per second with one exception. And that exception is freeware. I mean, it's, Snort is the only thing I've ever seen go above 40 megabits sustained. So. If your question. So if anyone wants to help, uh, you know, Marty write a better, faster detection engine, I'm sure he'd... Uh, I think he'd be for that, but at this point, I mean, it's like, you know, you're running the race and you look back and you go, man, all those guys with money sure are fat and slow. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, hit me. Yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> that means ask a question. <laughs> Do you want a mic? No. Um, so the question is that most systems today don't deal with spoofed attacks very well, and do I have an idea of how to deal with them more appropriately? Yeah, see, I'm, this is going to be where I sound like a broken record. You're like, too late. Um, <laughs> the, the idea here is if you know, once again, if you know what the traffic on your network looks like, and you have some understanding of what normal traffic looks like, and you model normal traffic, then there's one way to guard against spoofed attacks. Um, the other thing you have to do is you have to just do what a lot of stateful inspection firewalls are doing now, and that's just maintain some sort of rational state about how connections are coming in. I will bet you money in the form of this one dollar thing that says fuck me I'm late <laughs> 
that um, that that Stolarchak can give you a much better uh, explanation of this than I can. But my my idea is fairly simple. I'm a straightforward guy. I think maintaining state on the network, having a really good understanding of what connections look like, and not doing stupid you know not doing stupid things like ignoring ignoring checksums, ignoring packet IDs. I mean, if you just keep a rational idea of everything on the network, I don't think you're going to have as many nearly as many spoofing problems as people have today. So, good question. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm out of shirts, but I do have one pin. So, uh, yeah, you've had your hand up for a while. What's up? Properties, theoretical properties, uh, a system in larger sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a previous, um, uh, how long transition from theoretical to reality? Good question. Um, his question was basically, um, I've listened to vendors before and BS, <laughs> when is this all happening? I, am I being fair? I mean, um, probably putting words in your mouth, but they're my words. <laughs> yeah, the, so as I said before, um, the, the concept of doing high-speed intrusion detection is, uh, while not, while not uh, exactly completed, it's not vaporware. We have it in beta, right? I plan on releasing sources to the OpenBSD source tree to do high-speed network interaction. Um, our products already do interoperability. We're releasing, like within the next few months, we're releasing uh, an open source rules-based language that allows you to communicate with systems in real time. So we're talking about 60 to 90 days away from an open source rules-based language. I also plan on making the modifications that I'm talking about, about 2,100 lines of code. I plan on making those modifications to the OpenBSD kernel to allow some, uh, you know, maybe not super robust, but certainly some first step packet scrubbing to occur. So I think by November 11th, which is the release of OpenBSD 2.8, you're going to see an awful lot of this technology in the, in the stock OpenBSD distribution. Yeah. Uh, in the back. Um, good question. The question uh, was basically, if anyone didn't didn't hear it, uh, <clears throat> although he's in the back of the room, I'm sure you all heard it. <laughs> uh, if I did, um, yeah. The question is basically, if you do active packet scrubbing, you're in a position where all packets have to go through you. So you have this real problem of uh, you know being susceptible to distributed denial of service tax, things like that. And you know what? I agree. Um, you're going to have the exact same problem that you have with a Cisco router. Uh, Cisco routers have about 32 mega frames, uh, sometimes more. But you have a situation where you have to maintain state on that Cisco router, and the Cisco router itself uh, is, is actually, in my opinion, a, uh, a lot less robust when it comes to maintaining uh, some rational understanding of what's going through the network and maintaining uh, you know, some rational idea of how, how to recover uh, with a distributed denial of service. I mean, let me give you an example. I mean, you can put, you know, a PIX on a network, and I'm not just bagging on PIX, it's a lot of stuff, but you can put a PIX on a network segment, and no matter how you configure it, if you run uh, NMAP, if you run a SIN scan, a fragmented SIN scan from NMAP, uh, either through the PICs or, or into a network that passes through the PICs that doesn't exist. And the PICs has to maintain all of that state. At some point, it's going to fall apart, just like everything else. So the idea here is, with active packet scrubbing, you at, least, uh, you at least know what you're getting into. You at least know that you're getting into a situation where if packets start going crazy, uh, like someone's running in map <laughs> to, to hosts that don't exist because you have this understanding of the network you can at least drop those connections in favor of ones that aren't you know that aren't irrational so I think it's a lot uh, it's a lot more rational approach to the problem okay I think am I time up do you want to um, give that to that guy that's a really good question okay um, yeah the guy in the back you get a fuck me on lead sticker or pen. That was a good question. Sorry. You know, uh, Cisco claims to already do that with the picks. Um, they, they mentioned something vaguely. I was wondering if, if you can go into more specifics on the scope by type of the uh, scrubber. Because mm -hmm. what they talk about is, is uh, changing their filter list. Yeah, right. It's not certain types of signatures. Right. So um, the, the comment was Cisco changes their filter list uh, actively based on certain types of signatures. I totally agree. 
They changed the access control list. I absolutely agree. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is scrubbing the packets and the packet content and the packet header so that you sanitize things that go into the network so that you guarantee that everything that comes into the network is is uh, sanitized. And, and you know, I agree that, that Cisco does some of this, but what Cisco certainly does not do is maintain an active understanding of the internal and external network segments that are connected to and modify uh, whether or not they're holding packets or modify how packets look or modify, modify uh, packet destinations, things like that, based on a heuristic understanding of the network. Okay. And one more question, then I'm out of here. Um, yeah, go ahead. I hope so. The question was, do you see real-time scanner moving toward integration with host-based systems? You know, I absolutely hope so. I hope that people take the, uh, the rules language that we're proposing and modify it and add to it and create a consortium and spend four you know, years arguing about how it should be set up. And then, in the meantime, rational vendors do what everyone else does, which is just implement the damn thing, and get to a point where we're actually maintaining visibility between the host's understanding of what's happening on the host, the network's understanding of what's happening, I mean, the scanner's understanding of what's happening on the network and the IDS's understanding of what's happening on the network from uh, you know a historical model. So that's it for me. Thanks, guys. You've been wonderful.